Mary. Good afternoon. I am Mary Mayhew, the Commissioner for the Maine Department of Health and Human Services, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today to recognize a unique time in the history of Maine's Medicaid program or Maine Care. For years, before this administration took office, spending and fiscal mismanagement in Maine Care overwhelmed the Maine economy and the state's budget. For more than a decade, the solution to the problem was to put off paying our bills and to accrue massive debt owed to Maine's hospitals. At the same time, Maine Care ran significant overruns which led to hundreds of millions of dollars in additional need for our most vulnerable and critical populations. Supplemental budget requests were par for the course to the point that those who were managing the Maine Care program were crafting supplemental budgets before the biennial budget was even approved. An approve this now and ask for, fun for more funds later attitude was the norm rather than the exception. As a result, the Maine Department of Health and Human Services has moved from one crisis to, the no to another, bailing out the boat and not charting a course, plugging holes and not planning and fulfilling the needs of our most critical members of our society. This governor and this administration has changed all that. We are paying our bills on time and we have stabilized the foundation of the Maine Care Program, a $2.4 billion annual program. Today, I am extremely proud to report that we are no longer bailing out the boat. We are, in fact, charting a course that is aligned with critical populations and critical priorities. Today, we are taking an important and significant step in meeting the needs of our elderly by increasing the financial support to Maine's nursing facilities by a total of $25.4 million. We are able to do so because of Governor LePage's leadership and vision. The work of this administration to reduce the size of Maine Care and other welfare programs, the improved ability to analyze and forecast spending, and the right decision to not expand Maine Care to 100,000 able-bodied individuals is the reason that we are able to be here today to increase critical funding for the nursing facilities. Our efforts have led to near zero growth in the Maine Care spending in state fiscal year 14 and negative growth forecast for state fiscal year 15. We have stabilized the financial foundation. We are not staring at a sea of red ink that leads to crisis-driven decision-making. And because of these efforts and the governor's commitment, we are able to use these savings to support important services delivered in Maine's nursing homes. As the governor has repeatedly stated, our elderly, and the developmentally and intellectually disabled are now at the front lines of our priorities, and rightfully so. While we recognize the importance that this infusion of funding delivers to Maine's nursing homes, we also understand that there's much more to be done. We have a rapidly aging demographic. The demand will only increase. We have got to continue to look out more than six months to effectively build and plan for a system that will meet the needs of this population. Maine is the oldest state in the nation, and our elder wave is yet to crest. An independent study by Woods and Pool Economics in 2012 predicts that Maine will see a 58% increase in residents aged 65 to 74, and a 42% hike in people aged 75 to 85 by 2022. As we continue to prioritize services, we must seek more flexibility from the federal government while supporting our most vulnerable seniors at all levels of care, whether it be in the community or in our nursing facilities. 
while the state's resources continue to be at a premium. We do not live in a world of unlimited resources. I look forward to our continued efforts to establish priorities in a thoughtful, meaningful way, knowing that main care spending is stable and the program is on firm financial ground and is aligning our spending with core critical priorities. Thank you.